Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about an important disease which is called subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord. But before we uh, actually dive into the topic, let us see the uh, some basic actually. So some basic. This is the uh, level of a uh, level of a spinal cord. We we are going to use this as a prototype. This is the lateral corticospinal tract because the, as the fibers they are what as the fibers are descending down right as the fibers are, are descending down now we cut them let's say we the fibers are descending down like this are descending down then if we cut this sorry if we cut this then we are going to see something like this right it's a suction right so that is it and then this is a, this is a what lateral corticospinal tract on the left side this is a lateral corticospinal tract of the what of the uh, right side but remember these they cross at the level of uh, medulla oblongata as they are descending from the cerebral co uh, cortex so they cross to the opposite side so this means the fibers that are we are, that we are seeing here at the left side pertaining this lateral corticospinal tract they are connected above with the what with the right hemisphere because they, they cross the opposite side at the level of medulla oblongata as they are descending down right so that is it and then, and then vice versa while fibers that are carrying sensation they enter the spinal cord this for let's say this is other fibers that are carrying sensation they enter into the spinal cord through the what through the dorsal hole or dorsal root actually so if the fibers are carrying vibration and then proprioception definitely the fibers are going to ascend without crossing upward then also fibers from the left side carrying vibration and then what carrying vibration and then uh, and the proprioception then we are going to are going to what they are going to ascend upward without crossing but they are going to cross at the level of medulla oblongata or a little bit above the level of medulla oblongata while fibers that are carrying and then these fibers are called what uh, dorsal spinothalamic tract they are the ones that are going to make the dorsal column medial lemniscus system so the function of them or their function or their job is to carry uh, uh, vibration and then two point discrimination and then what uh, proprioception while fibers that are carrying temperature sensation and then uh, pen sensation and then crude touch so still since they are sensation they enter through the dorsal cord but unlike for the dcml they cross right away at the level they enter into the spinal cord they cross to the opposite side so they cross to the opposite side right fibers also from the left side that are carrying uh, pen and temperature they cross right away at the level of the spinal cord and then they ascend upward right so that is this is the difference between the dorsal column and then the what uh, uh, lateral spinal these are called lateral spinothalamic tract while these are called what dorsal spinothalamic tract these are carrying pen and temperature while these are carrying what uh, vibration so that is it so now let us see definition and then the etiology of the disease this disease is actually refers to a kind of degeneration refers to degeneration of the of the spinal of the spinal cord uh, posterior and uh, lateral columns Posterior and what? Uh, posterior and uh, lateral columns actually of the spinal cord. So this posterior columns, the posterior column means fibers that are what? Uh, uh, carrying the dorsal spinal thalamic tract. While the, the lateral columns, it means fibers that are descending down, right? As a what? As a lateral corticospinal tract. So as we have already seen in the last diagram, the posterior column. They are the it contains the fibers that are carrying what uh, vibration and then proprioception while the lateral columns contains fibers that are carrying what or the fibers that are descending down from the uh, fibers that are descending down from the cerebral cortex as a what as a lateral corticospinal tract these are the ones that will control the movement of our limbs uh, whatsoever so that is it so degeneration of this due to vitamin b12 deficiency 
D12 deficiency, which is the most common. So etiology. Sometimes they even say vitamin B, vitamin E deficiency. That's tocopherol, right? Vitamin E deficiency. But this vitamin B12 deficiency is the most common. Sometimes even they say copper deficiency. So that is it. And it is associated mostly with pernicious anemia. This disease is associated mostly with what? With pernicious anemia. So that is it. So now let us see etiology. Etiology. What will cause this decrease in vitamin B12 in the body? For example, in alcoholic alcoholism, right? Another factor, someone who is suffering from Crohn's disease. Because someone who is suffering from Crohn's disease, his terminal ileum is damaged, right? Due to damaged terminal ileum. Terminal ileum or inflammation of the terminal ileum, let's see. So if there's inflammation of the terminal ileum, definitely vitamin B12 cannot be absorbed, cannot be absorbed right? Because it is at the terminal ileum that the vitamin B12 is absorbed, right? So that is it. Then, uh, if the patient is suffering from decrease in intrinsic factor production, so decrease anything that may lead to decrease in intrinsic factor production, intrinsic factor production, because as we have already know that intrinsic factor, it is one that help in the absorption of this vitamin B12 at the level of the terminal ileum. So definitely, if the patient is uh, suffering from decrease in intrinsic factor, definitely no matter how quantity or how large amount of vitamin B12 you are consuming, you, or you are consuming, then definitely you cannot absorb it, right? So that is it. You will lose it in the stool. So again, someone who is uh, suffering from malabsorption syndrome, someone who is suffering from malabsorption, malabsorption syndromes, so, and then so and so on. So that is it. Then let us see now what signs and symptoms. Signs and symptoms. So the symptoms, since we see lateral uh, corticospinal tract are also affected, definitely the patient will be having a kind of weakness. Weakness of the legs. And this, uh, the lateral corticospinal tract are the one that are carrying uh, motor function of legs, lower limbs, upper limbs, right? So that is the patient, that is it. The patient will suffer from what? Weakness of the legs, even the arms, right? And then trunk, right? So that it is due to the damage of the lateral corticospinal tract. And the, the weakness, not that, the weakness is spastic, spastic paralysis. Spastic paralysis, why? Because if we have upper motor neuron damage, then that's where we will have spastic paralysis. Because the fibers, as the fibers that the fibers that are descending down, they are what? They are upper motor neuron, right? Then they meet with the lower motor neuron at the anterior horn, right? At, at the anterior horn, for example, let's say this is it. This is. This is the anterior horn, for example. So as the papers are, are descending, are descending down, then definitely they make a synapse with lower motor neuron. Then the lower motor neuron will exit. So if we had damage here, then definitely the damage didn't affect the lower motor neuron, right? It affects the what? The upper motor neuron. So that is it. So then the, the patient and whenever we have uh, uh, upper motor neuron damage, then the patient will have spastic paralysis. So that is it. Then we have a kind of Loss of loss of proprioception. Proprioception. Vibration. Because dorsal column medial laminal system are affected, right? And that if they are affected and point discrimination and and inability of two point discrimination. Discrimination, right? So if this fibers DCL, DCML, that is dorsal column medial laminal if they are affected, dorsal column medial laminal if they are affected, then definitely the patient will suffer from this uh, uh, 
factors actually so now let us see some uh, diagnosis or how you can diagnose uh, sometimes the patient not even sometimes in most cases the patient is associated to partic due to the anemia right that, because we have vitamin b12 deficiency so the patient is associated with what associated with partic due to anemia right so that's it sometimes even if it is even severe if it is severe if it is severe may be associated with peripheral neuropathy associated with peripheral neuropathy and symptoms of peripheral neuropathy peripheral neuropathy because vitamin b12 deficiency is associated with the peripheral neuropathy and the symptoms of this peripheral neuropathy are for example eg for example a tingling sensation like paresthesia and then and so on actually so depending on the severity actually so that is it and then now let us see the, the diagnosis right now let us see the diagnosis how you can diagnose uh, this so on physical examination diagnosis on physical examination and physical examination Babinski sign will going to be the, the positive right Babinski's sign is positive and then rhombac rhombac uh, sign this rhombac sign is the sign when the person when the person is having uh, his eyes closed cannot maintain a kind of position i will uh rhombac sign positive i will share the link of one video that even uh, demonstrate these two signs with uh with a patient then you will understand it more clearly actually so i will share it in the description of this video so check on the list so that is it and then you will have to order for your laboratory diagnosis lab diagnosis you have to order complete blood count in order to what in order to rule out to rule out megaloblastic anemia megaloblastic anemia because if a patient is having a bit of deficiency you will going to have uh, immature rbc right giant rbc megaloblastic anemia giant but fragile right so that is it so now let us see uh, treatment for the treatment vitamin b12 supplementation vitamin b12 supplementation Sometimes even you can even add it with folic, but folic acid, but this vitamin B deficiency. So uh, thank you very much.